Uh, well, today in this lecture video, we are going to understand the crux of the contact curve condition. To understand the logic behind the contact curve conditions, uh, let us take an example. Suppose we are interested in the maximization of a function which is which is f of x1, x2. This is the general form of a function in which their independent variables are 2, x1 and x2 and it can assume any functional form, right? And suppose this is the this is the constraint, right? So we want to maximize this function subject to this constraint, but note that this is inequality constraint and the, this is a single inequality constraint. The contact condition is applied, is used when we are having inequality constraints, right? So, first of all, we have to develop the Lagrangian function. In Lagrangian function, it should be noted that we, uh, we arrange this constraint. Note that in case of equality constraint in which we are using a Lagrangian multiplier method, we can uh, either shift the left hand side to the right hand side or the right hand side to the left hand side there is no restriction over there but in case of contact curve condition this uh, this arrangement matters so it should be arranged carefully so we are setting a lagrangian multiplier function and this function can be something like something like this but we are not always interested in the maximization of a function note that if we are interested in the minimi minimization of a function applying the contact curve conditions uh, if we maximize the negative of the Lagrangian function in which we maximize we are interested in maximization we are doing minimization it means that the negative of maximization of a function is the minimization of a function so we can do minimization by this method as well uh, now we are reporting the first are necessary and sufficient conditions um, for maximization using contact curve conditions so these conditions can be so these are the half condition uh, of maximization of the function subject to the given constraint right now what does this condition mean and how would we justify it to understand these conditions, let us take uh, a diagram. Assume a sim simple case in which y is the function of x, right? And there are three panels. Suppose this is panel A, and this is panel B, and this is panel C. If you look at this diagram, you can see that you are using positive x and a prime of x is equal to 0, right? And this is the function which we want to optimize, right? And you can see at this point a prime of x is equal to 0, derivative is equal to 0, right? x is positive. So if we multiply the two value positive x and a prime is equal to 0 to 0 and positive value, this is always equal to 0. So this is the first very case, and this is an interior solution because you are using the positive amount of x, right? Now look at the second diagram. In the second diagram, you can see that. This is the point, right? Look at point G, right? And this is your a prime of x, which is equal to zero, right? But this time x is equal to zero because you are on the vertical x, right? So you are using at this point zero, x is equal to zero, a prime of x is equal to zero. So a prime of x is equal to zero because it is a horizontal line, right? and x is equal to 0. So, it multiplies 0 with 0. So, x into prime of x is again equal to 0. Now, look at the third one. Again, if you look at this point like j and h, right? The derivative, a prime of x is negative because you can see that it is it is a uh, negatively slope. At the same time, at point j2, the tangent is negatively slope, right? And x is equal to 0. So, if x is equal to 0 and a prime of x is negative, anything multiplied by 0 is always equal to 0, right? So, this is equal to x into prime of x is equal to 0. So, what we conclude is x into uh, a prime of x is equal to 0 throughout these diagrams, right? 
So we what we conclude is x into a prime of x is equal to 0 which is the third condition uh, in the which we discussed in the previous slide right. What we conclude from all these three diagram is x is either greater than 0 or it is equal to 0 x is equal to 0 equal to 0 and x is greater than 0. So x would either be greater than 0 or it will be equal to 0 and x into x prime of x is always equal to 0. What we look uh, now look into the a prime of x either it is equal to 0 equal to 0 or it is less than 0. So that is why a prime of x is either uh, less than or equal to 0. So these are the first three conditions which we discussed earlier and this is the uh, first three conditions of Kahn and Tucker. So these are the three conditions which we have shown with the help of the three diagrams, right? Okay. Now what actually this condition do is they maximize, maximize the Lagrangian function right with respect to x i. This is the first half conditions right. It maximizes the Lagrangian function with respect to x i. Now look at to into the rest of 50 percent conditions. These are the rest of the 50 percent condition right. Derivative with respect to lambda right it is uh, at least equal to 0 lambda bar this is at least equal to 0 and lambda bar time derivative with respect to lambda this is equal to 0 and what this condition do is they minimize the Lagrangian function f of x1 x2 and lambda which we are reporting by f of dot with respect to with respect to lambda. So on one hand we are maximizing it with respect to x i on the other hand we minimize the Lagrangian function with respect to lambda. So what we are seeking out we are seeking out the uh, saddle points because saddle points are those points at which the function uh, would uh, from one side be maximum and from the other side it would seem uh, minimum. To understand this let us take a diagram. So if we look into this diagram suppose this is the left right and this is the this is the right. This is the back right and this is the fourth. Okay. So if we if we want to maximize it right from this from the left to the right we are maximizing it. So it means that this time we are taking the derivative of f with respect to x i because we are interested in the maximization of the function from left to right. All right. And on the other hand, if we look into the same function from back to forth so it means that we are minimizing it so if we minimize it we take the derivative of f with respect to lambda so these are the first three condition and these are the last three condition here we are minimizing the Lagrangian function with respect to lambda right and here we are maximizing the Lagrangian function with respect to x i and ultimately we will reach this red point which is saddle point. So if you are observing this point from this angle you will find it minimum. Similarly if you are observing the same point from this angle you will find it minimum. However if you are looking into this point from this angle you will find it maximum. Or on the other hand, if you are observing, if you are looking into this point from the right hand side as well, you will find it maximum. So the point at which the function seems maximum from one side and minimum from the other side is known as saddle point. And this is what the contact condition is doing. 
Now what is important to note that these conditions, this condition and this condition are known as complementary slackness, which means that x bar and the derivative cannot be simultaneously zero. So either x bar will be equal to zero or the derivative will be equal to zero. Furthermore, we conclude that the contactor condition would either results into boundary condition, right? or it will result into interior solution. So this is all about the uh, contactor condition and to understand this condition and its application properly, uh, we will do a practical example on it in the next video. Thank you guys. Uh, the only thing that gives me more energy, more happiness, more motivation to create more videos for you guys is your kind response. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay happy.